All right. Welcome. Hello. We're so excited to be here with you today. I'm, my name is Ashley Nance, and I'm here with Amy Kratz today. She's going to be talking about her message about how words matter. And she's really excited to talk to wives and moms who want to step into something bigger. And that's why I chose the, the Reva video here or there for that part is, um, is there life out there? And the question comes to all of us, well, what are we doing now? I got everything that I wanted out of my life. Why am I not happy? So I'm really excited to be here with Amy today that will hear what she has to say about that. So Amy, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I recently just celebrated my 40th birthday. <laughs> that was, yeah, well, thanks. <laughs> um, that was that was a tough one. Um, but actually, it was better than my 30th because I'm in a much better place than I was when I was 30. I am a mom to six amazing kids. I wish I could just put them all in front of the screen and introduce you to them there. Um, my joy and my love and they're just amazing. I have five-year-old twins and that was a journey and, a, and an adventure in my life, my, mine and my husband's life that um, has been really fun and exciting and just never ending. <laughs> Um, I'm also married to a man that I love dearly and that I'm very blessed to have in my life. His name is Carl and I am also a personal mission mentor. Yay! Because a year ago I wouldn't have been able to say that. Um, I have known for years and years and years now that people everyone individually is created for specific unique divine missions but I didn't understand what that looked like for me and until I did until I finally had some things come into my life that really woke me up and created some awareness I lived in a pretty dark place so I'm very excited to be here very passionate about what I do Awesome. Well, tell me more about that. Tell me what, what started this journey for you and what, what did it look like for you? Well, it started, this, this is so interesting because it's like Ashley just said, I have everything I want. What's, what's wrong with me? Um, and I did. I, I always, from the time I was just little, I dreamed of being a mother and a wife and having this fairy tale um, romance and and being this great mom and um, I lived in a beautiful home, had beautiful views, married to an amazing man, had six beautiful children, and I was just so sad. I was dealing with depression and anxiety, and I had no energy. I, I didn't want to cook, and I didn't want to do the laundry, and I certainly didn't have the energy that I needed to take care of six children. And because of all that, and because of my desire to want to be this perfect mom, I heaped then on myself with all the sadness and depression and anxiety. I was heaping shame and self-loathing and guilt and ended up a lot of times because I couldn't face my family. I just felt so guilty about what, how I was feeling and what I wasn't doing that I would just hide behind a locked door curled up in a ball on my bed. May I share an experience I had? Absolutely, life? please do. I feel like it was forever ago, but it really wasn't that long ago that I had, I had a similar experience. I was, I couldn't, I couldn't deal with my kids. I was like, this is not happening. No, I can't do this right now. And I closed the door, I locked them out, and I hid under a blanket, and I just breathed. And in that moment, I'm like, I cannot be the only one who feels this way. It can't ha it can't be just me. It really can't. And then just even in that moment of just total shutdown, I just had this awareness. This can't just be me. 
there's got to be someone else who feels this way who wants to know that it's it can be okay even though it's not okay right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> so what what was what happened after that what helped you out of that place you know it's very funny if if you well you don't know my husband but he is he's a, he's an amazing man but he's very much an introvert and he came to me, I, well, I had obviously been seeking and praying for guidance on what to do about my life because I was not happy and I knew I wasn't giving my family what they deserved and what I wanted to give them. And so I had been seeking and, and reading and praying and about the time that I had really hit bottom, my husband came to me and he said, you know, I have these tickets to this three-day seminar and I really I'm going and I would really like you to go I would like you and our three oldest kids to come with me I said well what is it this was really strange for my husband and and he loves his work he loves what he does he's a business owner he's an electrical engineer and he told me that he had to take three days off of work to go to it and by this time my chin, I'm trying to keep my chin off my chest because I'm like what in the world and he said well it's a three-day seminar called limitless Chris Crone is putting it on and it's about just coming overcoming things that are holding us back and keeping us from getting what we want in life well number one we had sat in Chris Crone's home a couple of years previous and met him for the first time and I was so excited to listen to him I mean this was a couple of years ago and I remember feeling hope and then we went back to life and things just gradually because I didn't do anything different right you now and but I remember sitting in his home listening to him thinking one day I want to be mentored by that man this young man because he's significantly younger than me but his life experiences just blew me away and his knowledge and the things that he knew and so when number one <clears throat> when Carl told me who was putting it on, I knew it would be good. I knew it would be worth my time no matter what. Mm -hmm. Number two, um, when my husband was, was so impressed with this and willing to go spend three days being outside of his comfort zone, I was a little bit curious about how that was going to look. So I was gonna, wasn't going to miss that. But number three, there was something inside me that just said, you need to be to this seminar. There's answers here that you've been looking for. And there were. And it just, it wasn't just the three day event, but it was tools that I took away from that event that just set my life on a different trajectory. Awesome. So I know in the interview, we don't have three days worth of seminar to yes. sum up everything, <laughs> but would you share with us maybe a little nugget to give us a taste of, of what you learned that, that we can use right away? That is where words have power come in. Okay. Yeah. I'm excited you, to hear more about this. <laughs> yes. You, you just can't imagine the power that your words have. I love my family dearly, but my mom tends to be a very – her cap, her cup is half empty instead of half full. And um, – she worries, and it's all based out of love, right? We do this thing, and as moms, it, we have to worry. If we're a good mom, we have to worry, because see, that's the culture of this perception of a good mom that happened, at least in my world, that was, that was what we had to do to be a good mom, but worry in itself is not a positive word. It has a very negative connotation, and it doesn't make us feel good inside, and am I taking too much time? You no, have to stop. Continue. No, <laughs> continue. So, I want to hear all about it. So we just, we choose these though. We, we choose to bring on the worry because that, it, well, I don't know why. All of us probably have different reasons for taking on what we take on, but it has the same effect in our bodies. It, it, it causes us to resonate at a lower energetic level. And when I learned this, I started observing very consciously the things that I was saying to myself. And it was not pretty. Mm -hmm. I, 
I don't know that for years, if I ever said anything uplifting and positive and encouraging to myself, let alone thought those things. I mean, all the time they didn't always exit my mouth, but they were always rolling around in here and it does the same thing to us. So when I learned, when Chris opened just like, just like kind of set this landmine off in my brain about what I had been doing, and then I became conscious of the things I was saying to myself, I started to have this correlation between my thoughts and my health and my emotional well-being and how they were all interconnected. And I started changing. I decided, you know what, I have power over, nobody can make me think a certain way. They can't. It might seem like it when we're in that place, but we always are at choice over what we choose to believe and what words we choose to feed ourselves. And that's when my life began to change. And it's not easy because when you have been programming yourself, well, almost sometimes from childhood because we learn from our moms. And, and my mom was, a, I love my mom. She's a fabulous mom. But she learned from her mom how to worry <laughs> and and that worry comes out in negativity because it's just a naturally negative word and then it, we just get more and more burdens on our shoulders and wave there's probably a <laughs> <laughs> and so it is a journey and you catch yourself oftentimes with we're in the dark and it's okay <laughs> um, these, these phrases that you just continually speak to yourself, like when you do something wrong, it's not, oh, I did that wrong. It's okay. I'll move on. It's, oh, you are so, I don't even like to say the words anymore, but, but that was how I used to talk to myself, that I was stupid and that I was dumb and that I couldn't do anything right and that I didn't deserve this and, and I didn't deserve that and all of these negative things. And... I have found, to make a long story short, that once I changed the way I talked and thought to myself, there we go, that I came in back into the light of my life. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Such a powerful analogy. Um, but not only did just my life start to change, I noticed that my children became happier. Yes. And That's how it goes. Yeah. And my marriage. Oh, my gosh, you guys. My marriage. My marriage was never bad, but it was just kind of, you know, you get into that little slump. I don't know if you've ever heard Marianne talk, but she talks about how you get into your routine and you just go and then he goes and then you come back and then somebody's in charge of the kids and then it's time to eat dinner and then we're exhausted and then we go to sleep. And, and there was no real connection like I wanted there to be. And I've been practicing this pretty actively for almost a year now and incredible things are happening in my marriage and my, and my relationships with my children and in my personal power. It seems so simple, but it's really true what you're saying about how when we let negative words into our lives, they bring us down. And if we just change how we do, how we talk to ourselves and we bring ourselves back up and when we can elevate ourselves, other people are like, oh, you mean I can be big and happy too? Okay, let's do it. And, and it really mirrors everybody around us. It's, you're right. It seems so simple. And it's so not. <laughs> but it so works. <laughs> it so works. It does. And, and I've had a similar experience. And it, it's amazing. You start work, you feel like you want to worry about your kids and make sure they're all okay. But once mom's okay... All of a sudden, everybody it's else is okay, too. It's so true. <laughs> it's so true. So thank you for sharing that. And let's see. It sounds like you've, you've built something, and now we're here on this interview. What, where do you go from here? What's next for you? Well, that's really a fun question for me to answer <laughs> because I, I talk a lot about how everyone has this divine mission that – is unique to them and they have these purposes that they need to fulfill and I'm starting to fulfill some of those dreams 
that I always had. And I just, you know, I, I started listening to what my culture told me was a perfect mom. And those dreams didn't fit into that. Imagine that. <laughs> because it's this imaginary perception, right, of what this perfect mom needs to be. But my perfect mom is who I am. And Ashley's perfect mom is who she is. And guess what? It's all of us. It's all of who we are. It's not just making sure we keep the bums changed and making sure we've got dinner on the table every day at this time and making sure everybody has ironed clothes. It's not just that. It is those things. Maybe I don't iron. Maybe Ashley does. No, I do. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's all of those things. Plus it's things like I have a dream too. I always wanted to be a transformational speaker. I would watch these people on this, these stages and they would just fill my heart with hope and I would be so inspired and I always wanted to be able to, to stand up and affect change in a crowd, in a large crowd of people. And I just went, oh, but that's, you know, that's just a silly dream. Well, now it's becoming a reality because I am letting go of that cultural perception of that perfect mom. And I'm becoming me, all of who I am supposed to be. And mom is absolutely part of that. I get to be that mm -hmm. and it's fun now yeah it's fun and I get to have my dreams I get to be a speaker I always wanted to be a writer I love to write I'm working on co-authoring a book with my mentor Chris Crone and it's so exciting so that's what I'm guessing we need to wrap this up but if I could leave you with one thing that would be get in touch with all of who you are and I, maybe all of you aren't moms that are looking at the screen. Maybe you feel like all you are is a wife or all you are is a daughter or all you are is a worker. You go to your work every day in and out all day long. I promise you that you have something great to do and you have purposes you need to fulfill. And according to my experience, a lot of those dreams that you put up on the shelf are part of that in some way some shape some form they're part of you of this whole you of who you're supposed to be thank you so much for sharing that and and uplifting my life and our viewers life today and for being here with us and do reach out to amy she is fantastic and so approachable as you can plainly see and we're so glad to have her with with us on the program today and uh, reach out to her reach out to me if you feel called to ask for an interview, let me know. Uh, if you feel called to talk about mentoring with Amy, please let her know. And we're so excited to hear from you. Um, like yeah, it? sure. I'm absolutely. So sorry. I just forgot to mention that I am starting a women's mentoring group. It will be, um, there will be a group of between 10 and 12 women and we will be conversing weekly over the phone and I will be doing belief breakthroughs at intervals individually with each of those women and it will be so much fun if you're just needing that extra lift and you just need someone to believe in you I did I needed someone to believe in me because it was like I said it was hard for me to even look in the mirror and think something positive no more of that we're done with that so if you're ready to start on that journey absolutely feel free to contact me and what's the best way to contact you uh, text is the best way. My number is 435-650-9921. Okay, one more time. 435-650-9921. All right, so text get me if you feel a call to that and to connect with her one way or the other. She'll be happy to hear from you. And we'll conclude for now. We'll, we'll restart again with me as the main speaker at noon. Um, we look forward to seeing you at that time. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys.